to paint the picture for the young clips, think about it. You got five to six of your core players. One of them is 18, four are like 19, and then you got one 20 year old. When y'all was in the league, man, I loved watching y'all play because it was just fun. Los Angeles, Richardson with the steal, ahead to Miles, what an alley oop, and he throws it down from heaven. Y'all was like the Zions and the Mellows of your day. I'm looking at y'all like, man, they the way, bro. We felt like a college team, really trying to prove ourselves in the grown man's league. Our style brought a whole different way of basketball to the NBA that they, they really haven't seen. We used to liken ourselves to like, man, we pit bulls. We, we all in here trying to get out the cage and go, go bite somebody's head off. Back door to two. What oh, they fun to watch. That won't change the narrative of that blowout shit because we wasn't getting blown out. <laughs> like there's, there was a few games where a team might have might have got their win or, or so forth on, but we was popping a lot of teams that didn't think we can pop them. So it's the kid coming out of high school, and he's gonna be really fucking good. He might go number one. I was like, where, where are you from? He's like, I mean, he, he sang a little. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, man, he looked like you, play like you, baby, 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 baby KG. They called him, but I was like, what? I didn't think people really knew who I was. I was playing pro amps, I was playing against pros, but we in the middle of the hood. But, you know, just going to Chicago, everything was happening so fast. I went from sophomore and junior year, like they, they knew I was a good player and they knew I was gonna be one of the good players, but talking league, that was just like a whole nother level. Once I committed to St. John's, I feel like I really started hearing the league talk uh, way more. It was that period where the culture was the high school kid. That's when y'all was thriving. The 6'9", 6 6'8", 6 6 long, lengthy, that could dribble, that could like, they, they was looking for the next KG, T-Mac, Kobe. That was the hot thing there. That's what made you, you so intriguing, man. First time I met Q, uh, like, Q was the man. Like, so, like. Q then was the number one AAU team in the nation. They probably played 10 tournaments, probably lost one game. Like once I seen him that summer, I had the chance to play with him that summer. He was like the bar that I wanted to be, so I watched his whole senior year. Don't put this, don't tell nobody I said that, but I thought he should have won Mr. Basketball. And um, he won everything that I was trying to accomplish. So I'm building up to where my senior year, I want to be first team all state. I want to be Mr. Basketball. I want to make the McDonald's game. That was my goal. So that's, that's what I got from him. D. Miles was literally the first and only guy we had from East St. Louis. I had I don't even think I had heard of East St. Louis until him. East St. Louis is four hours away from Chicago, so whenever he would, you know, come in town to, to play in a tournament or something, he would have to stay, stay the weekend or whatever it may be. And he stayed at my house the first couple of times for whatever reason. And you know, we kinda we we hit it off right away. Uh friendship, little bro type situation. Q won a state championship, then he decided to stay home and play for DePaul. The only side stay home play to DePaul, he was freshman of the year. He averaged a double-double, player of the year, freshman of the year, newcomer, all this stuff in the conference. I'm like wondering, like, what the hell is this boy doing back here as a Yeah, sophomore? I didn't understand him coming back either. But. Listen, I'm, I'm born and bred Chi town man. I felt like it was Sammy Sosa, then me. MJ homie, had retired, it was Sammy Sosa, then we was the biggest thing home. in shot. We stayed home. Bro, I was on the cover of the ESPN zone. I was on flag poles all the way down the block with the pinheads. I was I was the man in them streets out there. What? At the crib? Shit, I was having so much fun. Like, I felt like, you know, even though I had did everything I did in college, I still was being told, that's cool, but you're not about to come here and do that at Power 4, you know what I'm saying? So. That was a big thing, because when I wanted to leave, I'm like, yo, 
If I leave as a freshman, you got to be a lottery pick or something or projected. But I just knew I was leaving out of my sophomore year. Like, that was a foregone conclusion when I announced I was coming back. It was like rain, sleet, snow. It was not happening after next year. Once my senior year came up, it was a no-brainer I was going to see what's up with DePaul. Like, if Q would have stayed or said he was staying, I really would have, you know, considered DePaul as a possibility of me going there and, and playing there because I would have played with, with Q. When he came on his visit, I was like, you know, I'm the host. I'm supposed to recruit him to come down. I'm like, you out of here, bro. Like, bro, you on the draft boards in the top 10. Like, you not coming to the to yeah. college, nobody's college for what? <laughs> By the way, I'm out of here too, but yeah. you out of here. Bro. Yeah, you out of here. First thing they were saying was I was lottery. And my thing was I didn't want to go straight out of high school unless I was lottery. We knew he was top five. That was a foregone conclusion. I was kind of projected anywhere between like five to like 20, you know what I'm saying? So me and D never thought there was an opportunity to get drafted together. It was a 50-50 possibility that I was gonna go number one, me and Kenyon Martin. My mom was like, no to Vancouver. Like completely, like, nah, we ain't going to no Canada. We never worked out for the Clippers, and we never wanted to go to the Clippers. So they was the one team that had three picks in the first round, and like the top 20. The Nets had the number one pick. They decided to go with Kenyon. Vancouver picked Stromile. So I thought I was probably going to go fourth to Bulls. And uh, Clippers, they didn't pass on me. They just told my agent, like, nah, we picking them whether you like it or not. So they pick them. With the third pick in the 2000 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Clippers select Darius Miles of East St. Louis High School. When D got picked at number three, I was too hyped because I knew at that moment he was the highest high school pick ever. My table was right across from his. We dabbed each other up, shook up and all that. And then, you know, it was like, all right, where the hell I'm gonna go now? I'm sitting there at the table. This is like the biggest, best night of your life and all this, and it's, it's turning into a nightmare because you don't want to be that last person in the damn green room. And I'm looking, this person gone, that person gone, this person gone, D been gone. <laughs> three, I'm he three, I'm 18, he been long gone. I'm just sitting there. I'm in the back and I'm taking pictures with my hat, with the ball. I'm sitting there and I'm sliding, I'm sliding, I'm sliding. And then Jeff, you know, he doing his thing, making calls. And he comes to me, he's like, yo, you go to the Clippers. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know we talked about you not, you guys not going there, but obviously Darius is already there. So that changes the whole thing. You guys could be together and this could, and that was like, for me, that was the only thing that like salvaged that night. The Los Angeles Clippers select Quentin Richardson from DePaul University. Before we got there, LA Clippers won 17 games out of 82. We didn't want to go there at all. They was like the, the shame of the, of the league, you know what I'm saying, for the last decade or so. We knew 100% we was in the Lakers town. It was the Lakers town, no no doubt about it. But I think it was like, that's cool. We in the NBA though. We was so talented and young, everybody was just thirsty to get, get to start their career. So like, it's my turn. Me, Q, Lamar, Corey, Keon, we couldn't get in the clubs because none of us were 21. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, yeah. <laughs> we was all together all the time. We used to be in the hood. We, we was practicing at Southwest College in Inglewood. Well, it was South Central. It's not Inglewood because people get on my ass. I'm like, nah, that's South Central. Yeah. Like a JUCO, <laughs> like in the hood. Like we was used to the environment. We yeah. just didn't expect it right. being in the league going to high yeah. yeah. like. Oluwa County pulled through his Aston Martin, the dude's like all up on the car, like, yo, look at the whip, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, we driving right. through, like, while they going, changing classes, there's kids everywhere. Yeah. They used to tell us, like, uh, make a left and go to the highway, don't make a right and go <laughs> to the liquor store. <laughs> you don't need to go that way. The practices, they was intense, like, the way we used to talk and play against each other, you really didn't think we really rocked with each other like that. There was a lot of wars, a lot of guys going at each other. A lot of practice got fucked up, <laughs> a lot of ass beatings. But uh... every single day, I'm coming in here to kick your ass and to let you know that I'm better than you. And those words would come out of my mouth. 
that's how we was coming. You got all pit bulls, everybody in year one and year two, and it ain't really like, some people might think that it's clear cut, this person better, but amongst us, we all like, shit, what you talking about? <laughs> We was the youngest team ever assembled first. Like, teams wasn't this young. And that's what a lot of people don't really kind of comprehend. Like, we was in a league that the average team had guys that was 28, <laughs> 27, 29 years old. We had athletes. Keon gonna bang on you. Corey gonna bang on you. I dunk on you. You got uh, Lamar who was just so nice. Like, I always say that when I be talking to Laker fans that we had the best Lamar Odom. Because the Lamar we had, man, he played defense, he scored for us, he was tough. He was like the big dog. He was the dude who did everything we wanted to do the year before. He was almost rookie of the year. He was first team all rookie. He was the man in the city. Keon, the moves and stuff that he brought to the table, he was eventually going to be a great point guard. Corey was... Stupid athletic. Yeah. Corey took buckets. <laughs> Corey took buckets and took fouls from people. <laughs> people tried to run away from them fouls, but he didn't let them. <laughs> Q brought so many dynamics to the table. He was a he was a two guard that can post up, but he can shoot threes, and he wasn't even crazy about the three as he was as his career went on because he was still finding himself. D. Miles was the, he was a young, he was the phenom. D. Miles was 6'9", playing the four. In a league where the fours ain't like they are now. They'll get you on that left side of the court. His crossover from right to left was so nasty. Like, so many. Where he got them and he bong bong, right to left. And the rest of it is party. Cause the boy was stupid bouncy. He one dribble when he all over the rim, screaming, ain't doing nothing, barely breaking the rim cause he too skinny to do any of that. But boy, I'm talking about he was thunder clapping. Marius Miles, don't unleash him. I think the chemistry me and Q had kind of rubbed off on everybody else. It was more of the young style of what to play. Like I said, I give credit to Alvin Gentry because he encouraged pushing the ball. He encouraged pushing the pace. And that, that kind of went into what we naturally did and what we had going on. Where did the, uh, where did the head bump come from? Where, what, what? So the original story, right? Like people always want to know where this came from. So on the way home from, South, from, uh, from Southwest College, we passed Westchester, Westchester High School. This is a high school. They like the best boys. Trevor like, they like with Trevor the Reeves, Hassan. like Hassan Adams, Bobby Brown who played in the league, Amir Johnson who played, like they had hella dudes. So they was like the best team then. Trevor was only a sophomore then. But we started going to their games. Young boys on their team, this was they shit. This whole shit here was they celebration. We go to the game, we're like, man, what the fuck is that? What y'all doing? They like, man, y'all should do it in the games, the rappers, this, then, the third, whatever. At Southwest, they was up there doing it, you know, man and Trav. And Bottoms used to be at Southwest all the time, and they used to just be knuckling up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we had a really good team, so we used to throw it off the backboard to Hassan, you know, yeah. Bowman, anybody, you know? Yeah. Bang, hard dunk, the crowd cracking, knuckle up, you know what I'm saying? We was just cracking like that. The first time we did it, we invited the whole Westchester team to the game, so we know they're in the crowd, so we're doing it because they're in the crowd. We first we was gonna do it only when we dunk. Mm -hmm. So he get more dunks than me. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. dunking over, I'm oh, shooting threes, doing other stuff. I'm like, fuck that, I gotta do it when I do some other shit, you know what I'm saying? I gotta get my, get my reps up, so I started doing bong, bong, bong with the three. It became kind of like a taunting tool, too, for me at least. Yeah. D didn't never really use like that. I was more the antagonistic one a little bit of the two of us. Everything he did, he get a steal. He, he, he knocked the ball out of bounds. He, I'm talking about he get a three. Anything he do, he doing it. So I'm like, dang, so now I got to do it every time. So I'm like, fucking, I'm, we not going to do it no more. Fans was requesting it. Like, nah, why y'all didn't do the, the shit today? I came <laughs> just to see y'all just do this. So we just had to do it. And it took off. I used to hate playing you guys with uh, the Clippers boys, man. 
Y'all was out there losing, having fun, crossing people up, throwing lines. Hey, y'all was making losing look fun, dog. I was like, damn, I want to go over there and lose with them fools. They over there cracking. We used to always talk about y'all because we would look at the score sheet, you know, on the plane or whatever, and the Clippers lost by 30. But then I bet you we would uh, dice be like, I bet they was doing this. Y'all swag was so crazy. It didn't matter. We got in. We was down 20 or whatever. It was like, it's my turn. I'm about to go off. I'm about to, I'm about to party. I'm about to celebrate if I score. Everybody about to see that we could hoop. And we going to be up in people's face like, yeah, like, okay, that's all right. We getting smacked. We we couldn't do nothing about that, but we about to get you, get you this work right quick. Like, you know what I'm saying? I remember y'all young bucks coming in, called me the old man. Hey, old man. Hey, old man. You two for, the, for some young bucks. One of the biggest trash talkers that I had ever met. Y'all was the young boys. Like, y'all got to realize, too, it was a uh, target on y'all back because it's like we can't let them come up yet. When you come across guys like you guys and, and then you get the dunks and you start doing your stuff, you're like, I hate these little fuckers. <laughs> it was disrespectful to celebrate all the time. <laughs> like, yeah, you get you an and one, yeah, you can holler and all that, but you're talking about every single play, every time down, whether we winning or losing, they never really experienced that. It just, it changed, it changed a lot of stuff in the NBA, man. It was so dope to watch. And it was an era of hip hop also ushering into the NBA Word. because. No, when, this man Jersey was in every beat. We like, man, we used mm -hmm. to laugh. They used to call Bow Wow, Mr. 106 and Park. What would you say? No, he ain't. <laughs> <laughs> My young boy right here. <laughs> I think I would. I think I would D joining. It was him or L.O. Jersey it. was the most popular Clipper jersey. You might catch a one off me, L. Nor Corey, but it was yeah, D. Miles and L.O. Jersey was in everything back then. That was the first time people started rocking with the Clippers in a positive way. Y'all was on Jordan brand too. Big part of you. That just finished it off. That kind of put up another aura around us about the culture. That was a, a verification, a stamp of approval from the biggest dude doing it. Mm -hmm. And he didn't get nobody else that year. You know what I'm saying? This is the second year of Jordan Brand existence, and he come and handpicked me and D. You talk about the hip hop culture, like we got a commercial directed by Spike Lee. He's here directing our first ever commercial shoot for the Jordan 17s. To this day, me and Black still feel like them are Jordans. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Can't nobody tell us different. Like, that shoe is culture, and like, we feel like that's our shoe. Like, no matter what nobody say, that, like, we attach to that. We got five dudes that's not even 21 and older. We playing all the minutes. We went 31 games yep. in a grown man league. Yep. No, y'all was you know killing. What I'm then the next year, we went 39. We two games out the playoff. We kept that team at least another two more years. We definitely would have been a playoff contender. And we wasn't doing nothing but steady progressing. From Elton, Keon, Corey, me, Q, Lamar, we all on rookie Oluwai deals. Oluwa, yeah. We all on rookie deals. Like, so we're That's not everybody to play. We're not getting so seven players on <laughs> the team is on play. rookie deals. We could have paid Shaq and Kobe a hundred million dollars and still kept everybody on the team. It was there, it's just, you know, the upstairs, you know, they just did what they did. Shit, the first thing they did, they, they traded, traded me. Play. They got Andre Miller for one year. Looking at it on paper, you think that would be the move. It didn't work. Jay didn't like being in LA. Yeah. It didn't work. He got up out of there after one year. Yeah. It, and it, it was like, what the? What, why why we, just we just do, do that? that? Yeah. Like, a lot of people think we played like the whole four year. Like, I played there four years, but D only played two. And people sometimes kind of just lump that together and don't really realize that D only played two years and was gone. Mm -hmm. To see the today's game and how it's played and just how guys celebrate and just the overall just look of the game, 
I feel like, man, our, our Clipper team was like a start to that, you know? The reason why LA basketball is so good because we were young. I mean, you, I think myself, DeMar DeRozan, uh, you know, Paul George, uh, Russell, uh, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, we was all young going to seeing Tyson Chandler and seeing you guys in high school. So it was different. You know, when y'all came to LA and started doing that, when y'all used to come to Westchester and all that, you don't think Trevor and Autumn and Autumn used to see that back then? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that had a big effect on us. Yeah, I was motivated in high school. Y'all just, y'all did it a different way. Like I was in the city and I remember it was a different buzz. I was like 11, 12, 13, like in that area right there. I just thought y'all was fun to watch. You feel me? I, I thought y'all was a fun team to watch. Y'all played hard. Y'all had fun with it. Um, and, and that's how I was brought up to play the game. I want to go to Clippers, man. Clippers had the number two pick. I was pissed they picked Tyson, bro. I wanted to go play with y'all. Like I was like, this that'd be the dream come true. I'm like, man, God set it up for me to go play in, in LA, bro. So yeah. high school, like when we saw them doing like in the NBA, they, Q was doing that, you know. I was like, bro, I said, bro, we using that. Like I told my boys, bro, we doing every, after everything. Yeah. So in high school, like when I stay, I got state championship, you know, videos of it. Every time we did something, it was it was, it was knuckleheads like that. We felt like we was a part of it. So in in college, you know, I got to college and I was like, man, my boys ain't with me, but I'ma still carry it everywhere I go. Yeah. So. I felt like I was a part of the knuckleheads, bro. You gotta understand, like, if internet was around when y'all play, every kid in the world be done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, in, in all reality, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, you got kids shimmying, that's because yeah. of Steph. I mean, what y'all did, man, was really help youth. Like, yeah, I, I can, I, whatever I represent, I can, I can, yeah. I can represent it the right way while I'm hooping. From start to finish, me and D been me and D. You know what I'm saying? He from East Saint, I'm from the Hunters. Then you go from that to like, okay, being a knucklehead. You go from that to like 20 years later, we got a podcast. We still have any relevancy because of that. We normal dudes. We don't carry ourselves or be uppity or bougie. And I think we relatable to people. And I think that's what makes people be able to connect even still today. I feel like that team Man, changed the game for a lot of people, man. It's, man, <laughs> I remember guys telling us like, man, my kids love y'all. He got me to the point where I watch all y'all games. So I feel like the Clipper team always should be mentioned in the history. I'm glad I was a part of it, even though it was only short lived. And you know, it was, it was, it was the best hoop I done had in my life. What's crazy about it, we, Say free that. agency. Free, free agency, agency came after around. Our rookie deals. Free agency came around. I was in Portland. He was in uh, LA. And Kiki Vandaway, we both went to Denver. That Kiki Vandaway had the opportunity to get me and him. Like I committed to him. I even told Kiki, I come off the bench behind Carmelo. I really won tripping off it. Cause I feel like I would have eventually would have played with Melo in the fourth, but Kiki then. He didn't want to roll them dice on them, on them, on them yeah, boys. That have been. We up. almost had the opportunity to play in together that after was, we didn't. Yeah, that, that was, was the only the, time we ever had it. Yeah, that was the first visit we took. We both went there together. We visited yep. them together. Did our whole the whole thing together. Yeah.